so if we're kind of talking, you know, more anatomically as far as kinetic sequencing, when the hip should open or what forces the hip open, what Matt said was very keen as far as if the energy portion that we create from our load moment to our launch is sufficient, those things will apply themselves naturally. Now, if we look at someone, and me and James had talked about this prior, but we're going to kind of use this example right here. So this person is a swinger with that left leg, so there's no energy that comes out of that back leg. So she's a very strong drive leg kid. She throws 63, 63 to 65 consistently, so she's very good with that drive leg. Now, when we talk about when we see her hip open, uh, Matt had mentioned extension of the drive leg. Now, we never truly want to see extension of the drive leg if the foot is in contact with the ground. And, you're, and the reason I'm using this example, because there's a very great drive leg here. And so you'll see and notice that the drive leg never really gets to full extension. But this is a great drive if we're just looking at the single leg portion. Now, because that left leg doesn't have any force extending the hip, we're not going to see any rotation that's going to happen soon. We're going to see that as soon as she turns the foot and the knee internally rotates, that's when the pelvis starts to open. So that'll happen naturally, as James talked about, as we're kind of getting to extension of that stride leg, okay, and that foot is in, that knee is internally rotating. Now, if we're talking about in the kinetic sequence, when does this happen? The reason this happens is because, and the reason what we're looking at is we have to understand if there were good two foot pushers, if we're pushing off back and front leg, the hips are going to get into extension first on the left side. And then it's going to be the right. If we're sprinting, if we're walking, anything with locomotion, then what one leg is doing, the other leg is performing the opposite motion to create propulsion. We have to understand that. And so what would open the hip has to be something that takes away with that. And James is, is, is pretty spot on with that assessment. When we get to extension of that stride leg and that knee internally rotates, that is when opening should happen. And then what happens is it's just like uh, um, it's just torque and very simple concepts of physics. The ball is weighted. And if we're creating looseness at the shoulder, the shoulder should be loose because tension should be in the trunk core and stability from the legs creates the looseness of the shoulder to be able to move around in the shoulder capsule. The ball should open the torso. Now the opening of the torso and the hips are two separate components when we're talking about how we create the most effective type of um, disassociation and compression forces along with other types of forces because what's going to happen and what we want that's suitable that we don't get from this person is that their sacrum, so the middle of their pelvis and their spine is always in line and if we go back they never get any torso separation throughout their movement. So everything they're getting through their pitch fundamentally is just they're pretty much a single leg driver and really just arming this motion. So that's something that we have to look at and consider. And that's truly, you know, when we're talking about what opens the hip and when it should happen, that's one example of how it gets done and how it should happen when we see a really dominant drive leg that's doing its job.